Hello and welcome to episode number 334 of the TW2020 Challenge Run. This is going to be Smackdown for week 1 of February 2023, the first show after the Royal Rumble. And we are going to hear from Smackdown's own, the Women's Royal Rumble winner, Miss Candice LeRae. We're also going to hear from still the WWE Champion, Seth Rollins. And we have a big time main event. A fatal four-way tag team match to determine who will wrestle the Cyclone at um, the upcoming No Way Out event. It will be the New Day's Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods taking on the grizzled young veterans. Taking on the Usos. Taking on the Limit Breakers. And a whole lot more. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the show. The show opens up. Out comes Johnny Gargano. And he says, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SmackDown. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the road to WrestleMania is one of the most exciting times of the WWE calendar. And none, no no year has that ever been more apparent than, to me, this year. Now, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Johnny, you know, you take a step back, you know, your path to WrestleMania is not too clear. And I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Me and Tommaso, we're, we're hoping to get at WrestleMania. But I'm already there in spirit because what's more important than me going to WrestleMania is, ladies and gentlemen, please rise, put your hands together for the 2023 Women's Royal Rumble winner, Mrs. Wrestling herself, Candice LeRae. Out come Candice, her and Donnie Hug, etc. The crowd's trying, you deserve it, you deserve it. And she's like, can I, can I be serious for a sec? Like, first of all, thank you for the flattering ovation. Second of all, you know, I've got to be honest, it still doesn't feel real. I still don't think, I still don't think it's sunk in that, that I'm going to WrestleMania. Okay, so... Nova, you know, me and her had a hell of a fight, and there are times I thought I wasn't going to make it, because Nova, she's the future of this women's division, and I'm not. You see, despite being a relative newcomer here in Dairy Bui, I've been at this for 20 years almost, and it was it was really starting to feel like... It was never going to happen for me. Not not just in WWE, but anywhere. I was pigeonholed in this this role of, hey, we, we can put Candice in there, she'll have a good match with a young girl, make her look good. I was a good hand. So, WrestleMania. Maybe my only chance to... to take what is mine, take what I deserve, take what I've worked my ass off, for two decades to get. Which begs the question. Charlotte Flair. One of the greatest. To ever do it. Would be a hell of a match. And then of course there's. My old friend Bailey. You see Bailey, Me and her last year at Wrestlemania. We were, we were friends. We challenged for the tag team championships. And I stuck on my path, Bailey stuck on her path, and she found success a lot before me. And I was starting to wonder if I'd made the the made the wrong the wrong choice to go down my path. But I wouldn't change a goddamn second about any of it. So now, at WrestleMania, Bailey claims she's the real role model. Bailey claims to be. The top of the SmackDown Women's Division. And that title does prove just that. But in eight weeks. Barely my old friend. It's over. Me and you. One year on. We're going at it. 
And this time I'm leaving WrestleMania for champion. But it won't be a tag team champion alongside you, Bailey. I'm going to beat you. Take the SmackDown Women's Championship home. Out comes Kyrie. And she's like, she hugs Candice, she congratulates Candice, and she says, There's one thing that you're jumping the gun on, Candice. You said you will face Bailey at WrestleMania. Bailey may not be SmackDown Women's Champion. No way out is before. And we need a SmackDown Women's Championship match for that show. And well, I can't think of anyone better suited than myself. <laughs> Damage control. Yeah. We got the power, we got the rage, yeah. control the stage, control the game. That's when Bailey and Damage Control come out. He's like, oh my god, are you done? Like, okay, yes, ding dong, news flash, okay. Candace, nobody cares, okay. It took you however many years, you old, old grandma, I don't know how long it took you to get here. You say 20? Of course, barely been alive that long, you know? But here you are, finally. You get that one chance to make a name for yourself instead of just being Johnny Gargano's wife. You get to step out of that shadow. But you choose to do it against me? Um, ding dong dummy, newsflash. I'm better than you, okay? You, when me and you were friends, you used to ride my coattails. You only got on WrestleMania last year because you were my friend, Okay. And now you're going to sit there and think that this year's going to be so much different. This year you're going to beat me. Um, newsflash, nobody beats me because I'm the goddamn woman here on SmackDown. And I'm the best. I ain't letting this title go ever, 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 ever. I'll come chase you. And Thea goes, let me at him, Mr. Chase. Let me at him, you know. I've got a whole lot of rage I need to get out of me. Okay, and Bailey, last week, she pinned me, and I want my revenge, and I want it right now. And she goes, um, ding dong, dummy. Like, okay, I know you got knocked a bit loopy during the Royal Rumble, but you, you, you probably, you must still have a bit of a, bit of a problem or a bit of an injury out here if you're coming out here trying to pick a fight with me, the great Bailey, the SmackDown Women's Champion. You know what, kid? You know, I'll... I'll humor you, okay? If you want to come out here and get embarrassed by me yet again, then so be it. Get your ass in this ring and I'll whip your ass one more time and prove that I am the best here on SmackDown. And you, she points to Candice, it's like, you don't go anywhere. You take the chair, you take a seat right at ringside. Okay? Because I want you to watch firsthand what you've got in store for you at WrestleMania. And we'll see... You're going to have regretted your decision because, quite frankly, you've wasted it. Because this is what you're going to have to face at WrestleMania. Ring the damn bell. And a 66. Thea Hale rolls up Bailey with a surprise cradle and scores the upset victory. <laughs> this is for you, Colton, okay? You can relax with the... Royal Rumble shit now because <laughs> I said, oh, you're going to be a happy man relatively soon. Yeah, Thea Hale pins Bailey. Here's a surprise cradle, one, two, three. Um, the story of the match being that Bailey is very complacent, you know? She's like, she's not really like taking anything seriously. She just laughs and says ding dong dummy and thinks she's just the best. And. I guess she was just like toying with Thea in front of Candice to be like, hey, this is going to be you at WrestleMania. Ha ha ha. But it backfired. Because Thea Hale has pinned the SmackDown Women's Champion. One, two, three. A 34 for Thea, an 80 for Bailey, and of course Thea is ecstatic. She's over the moon. She's hugging all of Chase You. They're going, Chase You, Chase You, Chase You. But Bailey just looks on in disbelief, head in her hands. Like, you know? <laughs> 
if this is what Canada is in store for at WrestleMania, it could be quite an easy SmackDown Women's Championship victory. But yeah, Thea with the upset victory over the SmackDown Women's Champion. Non-title, obviously, but yeah. They cut backstage. Hams is, she's got Goku back, she's hugging him tightly after they rescued him from the Fallon Henley bar. And then Morgan's off at the side, like, just chatting with Fallon and Otis about, about the whole experience. About all the spooky witchcraft shenanigans that went on there. And Fallon's like, huh, weird that this was all going on in my family bar, you know? Noted, okay? Need to make sure that if we reopen, customers won't see any of that. But then Otis is like, so, next week, huh? And Fallon's like, what? What, what about next week? What, what's next week? And he's like, you know, the day of love. It's like, oh, right. We were supposed to do Valentine stuff this year. And Morgan's like, um, excuse me? It's like, yeah, you, you know, you were notice, you know, we've got a different restaurant. This time we're not going to get you, you know, kidnapped by witches, okay? We learned our lesson for that one. We're going to pick you a nice, fancy place out. And Morgan goes, do I not get a say in this? It's like, yeah, no, 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 it's going to be all three of us are going. And Bailey, and, not Bailey, Morgan goes, well, who are you two taking? I'm like, mm, you know, that's a good question. You know, I was hoping we were going to find some guys that were interested before then. Morgan goes, oh, great, so I'm the only person going, and I'm going with Otis. And he's like, what's that supposed to mean? She goes, oh, nothing, nothing. It's just, and then we hear Toxic Attraction laughing. Like, isn't this adorable, you know? St. Valentine's Day Massacre is just around the corner, you know. An event, quite frankly, made for us three. And these three little losers struggling to find Valentine's dates. Oh, isn't that cute, you know? We would struggle to find them too because, you know, we've got so many options. So many men just want to, you know, come and see us. Knock on our doors. Beg me for their attention. And I found like, what do you want, Mandy? She's like, oh, no, I'm just stopping by, you know, checking out the competition, you know, new women's tag team champions I hear, defending them tonight against Katana and Caden. You know, next in line, it's got to be us. And then Ham steps in and goes, we want titles. It's like, oh, okay, well, how about tonight? Us three against you three, six women tag team action. And then she's like, you're on. And, <laughs> yeah, the Morgan Hams and Fallon against Toxic Attraction, but... Also, some sort of Valentine's Day problem going on here because Morgan and Otis, I guess, are going back out, but these two struggling to find anybody. How will that resolve itself? We then head to the Adam Pierce office, and he's on the phone, like checking up on somebody. And the camera pans down, and we see Ilya and Charlie and Alba. And then he puts the phone down, and he goes, I mean, the good news is he's doing okay. You know, obviously nobody could have seen what happened at the end of Monday night coming. And he was like, ah, I hate that Gunter. You know, I never trusted him. So, Pierce, I want to be traded to Raw. And he goes, whoa. Okay, like, it's WrestleMania season. There's trades, you know, we've got plans going. Me and Alexa have been hitting each other up, you know got a couple of trades brewing and I think we've got like a couple of or at least one guy on here that wanted to go to Raw and she had somebody who wanted to go to Smackdown so I guess that trade's in the work and I guess if you need to go to Raw and you want to fight Gunter then I don't want to stand in my talent's way and have an unhappy roster but tonight Ilya I want one last match out of you to, to go out on Smackdown on top you're going to be in action against Cameron Grimes I want you to win and prove that you have what it takes to avenge Mr. Regal because while he may have been a bit of a bit of an asshole, you know, he didn't ex he didn't deserve what happened to him on Raw. So I had to be really careful with who I put in this segment because I don't want to turn or everybody face. Like GYV, I had an easy out there in the main event. But I don't mind having Charlie Elber and Ilya here because I don't mind these two being face E. And Ilya, we just had him go full-on protector. He had him ready to beat the fuck out of Gunter. And he wants to go to Raw and fight him. But Pierce is like, hey, you know, finish out one last match on SmackDown first. Which we later on tonight, Ilya Dragunov against Cameron Grimes. We then cut to the ring. 
Welcome to the most massive episode of OB Talk Show history. Welcome to Ms. TV. He goes, so, I hear you're all laughing at me, okay? You think what happened at the Royal Rumble was goddamn freaking hilarious. Well, it, why don't, okay? Sure, I beat Cam Carmelo Hayes last week and sure, he was number one in the match. But then, this, this tumbler, these people in charge, have the nerve to give me number five? After everything I went to to get avoid that number one position okay I don't think that's fair I think my proxy by winning that match last week I should have been given one of the final ten spots and if you put the Miz in one of the final ten spots you know the Miz is winning okay which is why these people didn't want the Miz going to Wrestlemania it's bullcrap and I will not stand for it then out comes Carmelo Hayes of Tricky he goes Miz you're yapping again like, it's okay, last week, you know, you, you cheated and you beat me one-on-one. -on -one. I was happy to be number one because I know I have what it takes to go from one all the way to the end. But you, you got eliminated before I did. Miz goes, yes, ha-ha, very funny, laugh it up. Okay, my night was ruined, okay? And there's only one person that is to blame for the ruining of my Royal Rumble. And he looks at Carmelo Hayes, and Carmelo Hayes gets in Miz's face. They both take their sunglasses off, and he goes, If I understand what you're saying, you're saying you only blame one man for your Royal Rumble failure. Miz goes, That's right. And Melo's like, Well, as it turns out, there's only one person I blame for my Royal Rumble failure as well. And Miz goes, And what are you going to do about it? And he goes, I think I'm going to knock his teeth down his throat, make him my number 11. And Miz goes, oh really? Well why don't you try? And he goes, that's why I will. I'm going to try and no way out. Miz goes, alright, no way out, huh? Let me ask you one last question. This man, who you blame for your Royal Rumble loss, is it who I think it is? And Melo's like, I think you know who it is, Miz. And then at the same time, they both go, Daniel Bryan. <laughs> and Miz goes, well, I'm happy to, uh, to announce breaking news. Mr. Money in the Bank Carmelo Hayes looks to make my old friend, my old rookie, Mr. Daniel Bryan, number 11, former world champion that he will put down, and he's going to do it at no way out. How come Cesaro? We haven't seen Cesaro since High Voltage, I want to say. Since he lost a warden. And he goes, What I'm hearing here is a bunch of why Look, I wasn't even in the Royal Rumble. Okay, after being runner-up last year, I missed out on this year's match. And I'm not out here moaning and bitching like you two are because I'm just going to get back on the horse, get back here on SmackDown and put in the damn work to make sure I win next year's. But you, Miz, and you, Mello, you just can't seem to let it go. You always seem to think there's something against you. Last night, from what I saw, the better man won. And Mello, Brian just outsmarted you. He goes, oh, oh, did he now? Okay, well, what if I whipped your goddamn ass right now? And Zara goes, well, I didn't come back just to talk. And then... Yeah, again, impromptu match, Carmelo Hayes against Cesaro, one-on-one, -on -one for a 90 goddamn six. And it is Carmelo who picks up the win. In 1652, he beats Cesaro, nothing but net. They both get 86s, which is fun. I'm glad I got Cesaro back. He, I didn't have a reason not to have him. I just didn't have anything planned for him for the Rumble. But now he's back. Because we're building to WrestleMania and I have a thing for him. So he's here. But he does come up short tonight unfortunately. And Carmelo Hayes picks up another impressive win. On his quest to wrestle Daniel Bryan. And he's going to do it. 
and no way out. Hayes and Bryan one on one. We then see Kayla backstage with damage control and an angry Bailey. She goes, Bailey, you know, can I get a word? What just happened out there? You lost to Thea Hale. And he goes, Did I? Listen here, Kayla. And then Bailey grabs Kayla and pins her up against the wall. She goes, you think you, you think this is funny, huh? You think you're a big shot journalist coming to ask? Oh, I'll ask Bailey the embarrassing question. Okay, everybody saw what happened out there. Okay, you saw it, I saw it, my girl saw it, Candace saw it. But if you think this is what Candace has got in store for her at WrestleMania, then you've got another thing coming. Because Losing to a goddamn student, a child, was the wake-up call I needed. I have been coasting by on being the best for too damn long, and eventually it catches up to you, Kayla. But no more. Thea wants to brag about her big win over Bailey. Nobody's even going to remember that next week. When I fight her again one-on-one, this time with my title on the line. And that will be a real statement of intent. So quite frankly, Candice, the, uh, I thank you all for waking me up to reality. Because that's that same reality that's going to smack Thea Hale in the face next week. And the same reality that's going to smack Candice in the face at WrestleMania. Is that I am number one. And Bailey walks off. And Kayla, like, lingers with Cora and Dakota. And Cora follows off. She's like, come on. Because now I just need to quickly um, pop. Pop somewhere. Are we back in? Are we 2-6? And then Dakota runs off somewhere to go do something. But, yeah. Bailey. Not happy with her loss here tonight. And she can take it out, I guess, again on Thea Hale next week with the title on the line. Bailey against Thea Hale. But then cut to Riddle. And he's on he's knocking on the hit row locker room door. Top dollar answers. And he goes, Hey bro, look, I know you guys probably don't want to see me, but I just is this now a bad time? And Top Dollar's like, It's a bad time now, Riddle. Okay. And then Swerve goes, No 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 no. Let him in. And then Riddle walks in. And Swerve, like, he just points at an empty chair. Like, I imagine Riddle's walking in, and he's, like, blab babbling. He's like, oh, bro, no, sorry about what happened on Saturday night. Sorry about that. And then Swerve just points at a chair, and he shuts him up. And Riddle sits down. And Swerve sort of leans forward on the chair, takes the sunglasses off. And he goes, I hate you. I've made no bones about it. I despise you. And everything about you. But last weekend. Last weekend. I took. I took that big tsunami from Bronson Reed. I was out. You know that that shit wiped me out. But you. You didn't take no. For an answer. You kept fighting. You kept fighting. You kept fighting. And you fought, and you came up short. And you know, I thought that if we lost last week, I'd be done with you. But you impressed me. Your heart and your determination. I could use that. I got just the role for you, my man. And you. Are part of the bigger picture. For Hit Row's expansion. And he sort of turns to the camera. Like he actually acknowledges the cameraman in the room. And he's like. You're going to have to leave. While I talk to my boy here. And the cameraman then has to walk out. And Riddle actually. For the first time in his life. Actually he's like. What the fuck's happening here. Like no stoner. No like. Oh bro yeah. He's like. Genuinely, like, 
intrigued as to what's going on. We then come back to Dakota, who we saw leave earlier on. She's like in a bathroom or whatever, washing her hands, a sink. She goes, stupid Thea, you know, thinking she can embarrass damage control, thinking she can embarrass Bailey. Okay, next week Bailey's going to beat her and whip her ass and prove that it was a mistake. And then she goes to dry her hands and she sees like blood on the... Or a anonymous red fluid, I should say, on like the hand dryer. She's like, what the heck? She like puts her finger on it, looks at it. And then turns around and then on the wall there, just written in this anonymous red fluid. It just says, she's coming. And then the camera pans around to go where she looks concerned. She's like, what? She's coming? Who's coming? What the heck is this? Uh, Bailey. And then she rushes out. And then we just pack the camera just pounds on the writing on the wall. As we go to commercial or whatever. Ugh. It's been a while since I've had an injury. Gigi sustained a broken metatarsal. That. Actually, no, I was going to say that might fuck up plans, but I can just sub Mandy in, so it's fine. <laughs> but it is toxic attraction to pick up the win when JC pins or submits Fallon, I guess. Um, 58 for JC, 69 for GG, 74 for Mandy, 37 for Fallon, 74 for Morgan, and a 55 for Hams. But yes, a week before what has been what seems to be a Valentine's Day disaster coming up next week. Unless I can find men, you know. Another disaster here for DKE and Fallon. They came up short against Toxic Attraction. But GG. The one in pain. Broken metatarsal. Not good. I don't know how long that keeps her out for. I think it's a couple of weeks. So she probably will miss no way out. So I will have to do some adapting. But again, I can just put Mandy in whatever situation. Wait, no, I've got to actually remove Gigi from our booking segment. I've got later on tonight. Okay, that's interesting. So, Gigi update. Two months. She's out. I thought I would check while I, <laughs> while I can because I had to back out to the booking screen. Two months she's out for. So, I guess if she's going to be at Mania, then it will just be a Battle Royal appearance because she literally returns the day before WrestleMania. But, yeah, that sucks. But I guess I can just do JC and Mandy for what I had planned. Anyway, Cheju. Obviously, they're celebrating Thea's win. Jimmy, Jimmy Shane, or Shane Reynolds even. Because I want to give each Cheju student individual, like, personality. I can't remember if I've been over this before or not. Or is this just something in my head that I haven't actually said out loud? Um, Thea is obviously Thea, you know, the wild crazy fucking energetic member Bodhi is for lack of a better term the the teacher's pet you know he's he's sucked up to Mr. Chase he does all the work he's a star pupil Jimmy Shane Shane Reynolds is the the wild wild card you know the, the man who's the party animal you know shows up to session turns up to class hang hung over stuff like that and then Haley is just you know you're standard like nerd like high grades doesn't really get involved in outside activities AJ's not supposed to be on screen here I don't know where she is <laughs> she's just mentioned in passing it's fine but yeah because Thea's, they all gassed up Thea's one can I let's go chase you chase you and Jimmy I keep calling him Jimmy because I know him like <laughs> IRL so um, it's going to be hard to call him something different. Shane Reynolds is like, yeah, let's have a party, you know. He's got booze, and he goes to hand everybody drinks, and then he gets to Thea, and he stops as he gets evil glares because, you know, she's not old enough. <laughs> and he goes, we can't get distracted, okay? Last week, we had the privilege of teaming with AJ Lee, and being in the same ring with AJ, and while she helped, is she helped chase you, she helped guide Thea to glory, and next week, she could become the SmackDown Women's Champion. We haven't got time to party, Shane. Okay. 
we gotta focus. We gotta get back in that classroom 7 a.m. tomorrow. This is Thea Hale week. Okay. Because this girl right here, she's the next SmackDown Women's Champion. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. <laughs> um, let's change Bodie's gimmick, I guess. Adequate. Top student gimmick, sure. But yeah, just a Chase You Celebration segment. And I wanted the specifically exist just for the the bit where the alcohol can't be handed to Thea because she's too young. We then get Kalo in the New Day. And she says, boys, you know, tonight in this main event, you know, four of the greatest tag teams here on SmackDown get to go at it for the chance to become the next number one contenders. You know, Kofi and Woods, it could be your time once again. And he goes, yes, we are. Count on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten time. W, W, E, World Tag Team Champions. And tonight, Kayla, they say the road to WrestleMania is the most wonderful time of the year, but today for the New Day is the road to 11. When we win this fatal four way, we've beaten the Usos how many times? We've beaten those grizzled young veterans. And Braun and Keith, they can't even stay angry. They can't even stay you know, calm for long enough to succeed in anchor management, let alone a wrestling match, okay? Your boys, the New Day, are going to be the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and we're going all the way to WrestleMania. And Big E is just in the background, like, tapping his chin, like he's got something he wants to say. And then when they finish, Big E takes the mic, and he goes, Oh, I'm arbitrary and you boys on from the sidelines, you know, but... Oh, I can't get my damn head around that damn Buster Gates... And that revolution. You know, they seem to think it's funny picking a fight with your boys, the new day. And now, because of them, I didn't go back to back in the Royal Rumble. I should have gone back to back. I would have gone back to back. But those boys, they missed the wrong former Royal Rumble winner. So, you two handle your business later on tonight. And at no way out, I'll handle mine. Because I want you one on one, Buster. I'll leave Kofi and Woods. They're going to be busy that night. Wrestling for the tag team titles. You leave your boys. And let's have ourselves a damn fine steel cage match. And there really will be no way out for you, Buster. <laughs> I love it because Buster like sounds like an insult. But that is his name, so it's fine. But yes, another big announcement. No way out. We have two matches set for No Way Out already. Daniel Bryan versus Carmelo Hayes. And now a steel cage match. Big E against Buster Gates. And of course, Kofi and Woods could be on that show against the Cyclone. Who knows? An 80 read? 80? Okay. <laughs> I'm already seeing profits from <laughs> Shida and Liv as the tag team champs. They get an 80 rated match out of Caden and Katana. Um, Liv pins Caden with the Oblivion to make defense number two of the titles. An 80 for Shida, a 73 for Liv, a 52 for Caden, and a 71 for Katana. And yeah, I guess after they've retained against Smile and Shine on Monday, two wins in a week. Nice start for this tag team title reign. But it could end as soon as it starts because Toxic Attraction, I guess Josh GG, not GG, Josh JC and Mandy. Jump, Liv and Sheeta. And JC holds, Liv in place. She gets hit with that big knee. And the same for Sheeta. And then they pick up the tag team titles. Pose with them. And then just like place them on Liv and Sheeta's chests. But it's an awkward situation because Mandy and JC have to do it because Gigi is out. Oopsie. They get a segment. Keith and Bron sat in their locker room together and like they're taping up their wrists ahead of the main event and he goes Keith about last week Keith goes last week went better than I had imagined you know last week I took you because you showed anger against Mr. Andre Chase so I wanted you to get that out of you but it wasn't until I was there with you stood in that naughty corner 
like a damn rapscallion. I will never forgive myself. But it's not about me. That's not important. What is important is you. And I saw that wild side of you come out. Hell, I helped. I helped bring it out of you. And we kicked ass together. So maybe I was looking at this the wrong way. Maybe we don't need to suppress that anger side. We just need to harness it to our advantage. Cool as a modern day Jekyll and Hyde, a Bruce Banner and Hulk, and soon to be SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Will that be the case? We'll find out later on tonight. But first, La French Connection are in the ring. And he's like, Bonjour, 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 silence. Add le Royal Rumble. David Maton showed the world that he's more than just a mouthpiece for La French Connection. He is le world class athlete. And tonight, he will be in le singles match. And he will pick up Le huge win on the road to WrestleMania. Tron. Tron Nerf? I, f I thought I remembered what 39 was, because that was the baby. We say WrestleMania 39 in French. Um, I want to say Tron Nerf. Or, unless it's like, you know, 2019. Like. Um, some of the numbers are. It's weird. French is a weird language. I used to be really good at it. But I've forgotten. Tron Nerf is correct. Boom. Anyway, out comes Kevin Owens. Um, he came back to the Rumble. And I specifically picked him here. Because I want to do this funny bit. Where. Kevin Owens gets into the ring. And he's like. Francais? And then he's like. Ah. Oh, oui, oui. La French Connection. Francais. And Kevin sort of just smiles at him. And. <laughs> he's like, two pals Francais? And then he's like, uh, we? Oui? <laughs> and then Kevin Owens just starts, like, speaking to him in, like, fluent ass French, talking about the rumble and shit. And we get the close up of David Martin's face, and he can't understand a word of what's being said. But then Kevin finishes, and basically he asks for a fight in French. And then David Martin, not knowing. Just nodding along. He goes, ah, wee 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 wee. And then he's like, great. I was hoping you'd say that. And then Owen smacks him. And then that starts the fight. <laughs> I, I just thought it would be funny. And then in a 70, Kevin Owens beats David Maton with a pop-up powerbomb. 79 for Kev. 64 for David. Um, we need to start getting Kev up a bit more because I think he's only well known. Because um, I was beating him a fair bit before he left because... I had plans going forward for him, and then he fucked off, but now I've brought him back, so he's still kind of cold in terms of momentum. But in terms of real life momentum, he'd be hot again because, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder and all that. But then after the match, he takes the mic and he goes, Okay, English this time. He goes, I know what you're thinking, Kevin. You're back awfully early. That wasn't a very successful stint. Listen. I can only stay away for so long, okay? And little I find, I come back, and what I've been chewing in a SmackDown every single week, and what do I see? Adam Gore's bitching about me betraying him. Okay, this is how you can tell. This is, this is the kind of person that Adam Gore is, okay? I went off to further my career and to further my life. And he, he saw that as a betrayal because he wasn't getting his own way. He had a team with goddamn Ezekiel at SummerSlam. And all oh, the sky is falling because Paul, oh, poor Adam Cole. And I'm supposed to believe that, that I'm the bad guy here? Okay, there was no betrayal. Okay, he was worried about me betraying him because God knows I've done that a lot of times in the past. He was right to suspect me. I'm not exactly, you know... Guilt free in that regard. But what happened? 
that wasn't a betrayal, but, uh, but the betrayal was Adam Cole taking it so personally and bringing out these guys called Kevin and Owen and beating them up like it's some sort of stupid metaphor. Well, the real deal's back now. Get your ass out here and see if you still want to fight. Then Adam Cole puts on the Titan Tron. He goes, Kevin, you know, first of all, it's great to have you back. It really is, but I don't know if you've noticed things have changed around here, okay? This whole thing we had, us as partners, us as friends, you ruined that by leaving. You had, you left me high and dry, what was I supposed to do? Adam Cole Bebe left for a few months. He had to just, you know, pick up where he left off and find people that wanted his guiding light, his guidance. And that's where I found the Paragon. And now, <laughs> we're writing our own story. And guess what, Kevin? He rips a page out of whatever book he read and he goes, Your chapter in the trash. You're merely a bit piece in the story of Adam Cole Bebe and the Paragon. You want to keep being an important part. But next week, Bobby going to shut you down. And no way out. Adam Cole Bebe finishes the job. Boom. So yeah, another big match set for No Way Out. Adam Cole and Kevin Owens are going to go one-on-one. -on -one. But next week, Bobby Roode is going to face Kevin Owens one-on-one. -on -one. So he's got Roode at next week's um, St. Valentine's Day Massacre episode of SmackDown. And then at No Way Out, he's got Adam Cole one-on-one. -on -one. Then see Sheeta and Liv getting checked on after their attack from Toxic Attraction. And Liv goes, well, you know, this whole champ thing, you know, it's great and all, but, you know, they're, they're, it's true what they say, they don't have a lot of targets on your back. And that's when Ruby Riot walks in. And she just looks at Liv and Sheeta. She goes, oh, I'm so happy for you, Liv. Look at your new best friend. You're so successful. You're so great. Have fun. And she walks off. <laughs> Pulling back the curtain, this segment had to be improvised a little bit because <clears throat> something happened and Gigi got injured, so I can't do the six woman tag team act that I planned. So this is some on the fly. That's why that segment seemed a bit weird. Like it was on the fly change. That wasn't supposed to be what was originally going to happen there. But I had to change because Gigi got hurt. So what can you do? Excuse me? Are you... Are you an, a 90? Cameron Grimes and Ilya Dragunov. 90 rated match. No storyline attached. I guess when Pierce said, you know, go out on a high, go out on a bang, Ilya took that personally. And he beat Sam Grimes in 11.28, Torpedo Moscow. Ilya gets an 85 and an 81 for Cameron Grimes. Not much else to it. I thought this was just going to be a match to fill time. But it got a fucking 90. This could be one of the best in-ring episodes of SmackDown ever. Because we had a 96 between Carmelo Hayes and Cesaro, which I sort of just didn't really pay attention to, but that was a big deal. And now we've got this. And then that main event could be really good, but I think it's going to be like 85, 84-ish. It won't be as good as either of those two matches, I don't think. Maybe. But who knows. Speaking of SmackDown, I guess, that's the only thing we've got there. Next week, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Love is in the air as Morgan Daniels, Hans Katana, and Fallon Henley go on their triple Valentine's date. Morgan will be with Otis, but you know, the other two are without men or women right now. So who knows what's going to happen there. But one man who is not without women 
is the Lothario Angel Gaza, and he's got a Valentine's Day special message to one lucky lady. Who's it gonna be? Find out next week. And then on to actual wrestling. We heard earlier on tonight, Thea Hale after her shock upset victory over Bailey earlier on tonight. Bailey challenged her one more time, this time for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And it'll be Bailey and Thea Hale one on one. We then, on more women's action, AJ Lee makes her return to SmackDown following her loss at the Royal Rumble to address her future here in WWE and what could be next for the Black Widow. And then finally, Kevin Owens and the Paragon's Bobby Roode one on one in singles action. But we didn't just have matches announced for SmackDown tonight, we had three big matches at the No Way Out. Those being the aforementioned Kevin Owens. He's fighting Bobby Roode with the Paragon next week, but at No Way Out, he's got Adam Cole, baby. Finally, these two men one on one after months last year of them thinking they were going to betray each other. We're still in an awkward situation where they both think they've been betrayed, so something's got to give at No Way Out. Also, inside of a steel cage, Buster Gates and the rest of the revolution cost Big E his chance to go back to back in the Royal Rumble. But at No Way Out, it's going to be just Buster and Big E locked in that steel cage together. No Nebo, no Rufus, no Kofi, no Woods. Just the two of them going at it. Only way to win is by pinfall or submission because, as the name of the pay view implies, there's no way out. And finally, after some Royal Rumble shenanigans, number one and number two in that match will go one on one. Carmelo Hayes looks to make Daniel Bryan the 11th former world champion to fall at his hands. Will that be the case? Come no way out. But looking past No Way Out, of course, WrestleMania on the horizon. And we now, as it stands, you know, things could change if Thea Hale or someone in No Way Out wins the title. But as it currently stands, Candice LeRae has chosen her, her pick. She will wrestle the SmackDown Women's Champion on the grandest stage in the mall. As it currently stands, is Bailey getting that match with Candice LeRae. But with eight weeks left to go, who knows what could happen before then. Then I see the Usos in the back. No Jacob. Jay's looking around and he goes, You know, Oos is weird. I haven't seen Jacob around all day. And Jimmy goes, You know, I'm sure we'll be fine, Oos. You know, he's not nearly here tonight. You know, this is about me and June. This is about Jimmy and Jay. This is about the Usos. You know, since you, you were gone for such a long time, and I was gone a while before that. Well, I'm really seeing the Usos together doing their thing in that ring. And tonight, you bring the New Day. We will whoop their ass so many times. You bring the Grizzle Jung veterans, lock them down. Bring them limit breakers, whip their ass. And we're going on a no way out. Once again, your new SmackDown Tag Team Champions will be the Usos. Play our music. And then out they go for the main event. The Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match. Number one championship for No Way Out on the line. Okay, this one got a 75. Okay. It wasn't even as good as I thought it was. It was bad, in fact. A bad main event to a good episode of SmackDown. Why was this so shit? Um, is it because of storylines being low? Yeah. Because I've only just started new storylines going into Mania. So I guess they're low heat and that ding the match. Whatever, shit ass main event, fine, we live, these things happen. But it is the Usos who win. Jay pinch Jagger with a double super kick. So, hopefully, a Bam Bam match better than a 75 will take place at No Way Out when the Usos get the chance to be SmackDown Tag Team Champions for the first time in about two years when they face the champions Bronson Reed and Ricochet in tag team action. celebrating they they go to leave and Seth Rollins' music hits 
and he comes out and he like laughs at the use of it he, he like gestures to the back he's like bye 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 boys i got some things to say and then as they walk past seth walks past them just doing his thing but solo still with his arms crossed stops just glares a hole through his brothers and they glare at him back and then jimmy like stops Shay like leave him moose leave him moose leave him moose and then the Usos go to the back and Solo just watches them leave before he then turns back around and follows Seth to the ring. And then we go to ads and we're going to hear from the WWE Champion to close the show out. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't quite hear that. I didn't quite hear that introduction from the lovely Samantha over there. She say, please welcome and still WWE Champion Seth freaking Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> now you all fought admit it you all fought the beast Brock Lesnar in his hometown he was gonna maul Seth freaking Rollins and take that WWE championship well guess what guess who still has their gold <laughs> now no 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 I'm gonna be look past Brock Lesnar Brock Lesnar's got his own things to worry about how he couldn't get a Royal Rumble number Okay, he took that loss so badly that he tried to weasel his way into the Royal Rumble, but he couldn't get a number. Okay, Warden got the last one. So, bye-bye, Brock. We'll see you when we see you. But now, on to more important things. We look forward to Wrestle Freaking Mania, baby. And there are, let me look at it, I look around that backstage here, there are a lot of names. A lot of names who could rise and be the man to ultimately lose to Seth freaking Rollins at Wrestle freaking Mania. I see a guy like LA Knight. I see a guy like as we saw earlier on tonight, Ilya Dragunov going over all. You got a guy like Big E. You got a guy like my right hand man here, Solo. You got a guy like Roman Reigns. Now, trust me, I'm as sick of whipping Roman's ass as one can be, but if he comes to WrestleMania and he wants another shot at this, I'll be happy to teach him yet again like I taught him what time after time after time after time. When me and him are in the ring together, there is only one winner, and that man is Seth freaking Wrestling has more than one royal family. Out comes Cody. He rides on the Cody Vader. Pyro goes off, kingdom blaring. We didn't hear from him on Raw, but we did announce that we'd hear from him on next week's show. I did that on purpose, so that this could be his first appearance since winning the Rumble. He makes a surprise appearance on SmackDown. And he takes the microphone. As you know, I bet you what he would do. Like, this is the specific funny visual I have in my head. It's like Cody, he, he gets into the ring after doing his entrance in his suit. And he, like, gestures to get a mic. But then, like, as he does that, he just turns around and takes Seth off him. <laughs> and he goes... So, hi. Did I miss anything important last weekend? Well, as I look up, and I see hanging all those feet in the air, I see the sign, this WrestleMania symbol... And that symbolizes a lot of things here in WWE. WrestleMania is not just the grandest stage of them all. It's the biggest event in this industry. To win the main event of WrestleMania means you have made it. means that you belong here. And it's something that a lot of men, every single person who walked through that curtain, has dreamed of. But only a handful of men can say they've done it 
and this year, the American Nightmare does it. Now, there were a lot of things that, coming back to WWE, that I had to find out my heart, my own way are true, you know. But there's one thing, one big falsehood that I faced this past week that I have to address. And that is that I was told that winning the Royal Rumble match, with there being two world championships to choose from, left the winner in a bit of a difficult situation. And a difficult choice had to be made about who they want to wrestle at WrestleMania. That's not true. This year, the decision was easy. Because you see, WrestleMania shouldn't even be the date of my destiny. I should have already fulfilled that prophecy when I won King of the Ring and went on to SummerSlam to wrestle the top of our industry, Roman Reigns, for the championship. And that night, I lost. The first hurdle, the first setback in my story came, not through a fault of my own, but through the fault of somebody else. Somebody else couldn't believe, couldn't stand the idea that somebody else could take their spot, that somebody else could get the job done where they didn't. And if we fast forward all these months, the Royal Rumble victory is mine, and I get to pick who I want to wrestle at WrestleMania. Now, could I? I could choose one of the greatest wrestlers on planet Earth, the man who holds my father's championship, Gunther. And I could go to WrestleMania, me and Gunther could have one of the greatest main events in the history of WrestleMania, and a Rhodes could have the big gold belt, as it always was meant to be. Or, I could do the one thing that my father, the American Dream, could never do. And that's go to WrestleMania to become WWE Champion. And lo and behold, who is the man standing before me holding that very prize? But the egomaniac who cost me my dream. I know all too well about dreams becoming nightmares. And in eight weeks time, WrestleMania 39, the grandest stage of them all, Seth Rollins, your nightmares become true when you're finally stuck in the ring with me once again. And just like what happened last time at the King of the Ring, I'm going to beat you I'm going to pin you one, two, three, and there ain't going to be no Seth freaking Rollins to screw me this time. Because he'll be down at my feet, groveling in pain as the announcement is made. And new WWE Champion, the American Nightmare. And he drops the microphone on the floor. And then Seth picks it up. He like taps it. And he like... Well, you've been practicing that a lot, huh? But you know what this, but they say when it comes out, you know? Royal family, wrestling has more than one royal family, you say, Seth. Jeff K. Cody. Well, listen here. Okay. What, what I'm going to do to you at WrestleMania, you're going to wish you got run over again. Because there you were. You took all those months off. I had a re-emerge in war games. Screw me over. But you think you're this royal family. You're going to do it for daddy. Look at what happened last time. A family stepped to me. I tore them apart. One of their own. 
under my thumb and my beck and call. In fact, Solo, if you will. And then Cody goes, that's where you must be wrong, Seth. Because you may have torn one bloodline apart already. But mine, mine will never die. And that's when someone from somewhere the hood grabs Solo's legs, pulls him out of the ring and starts laying punches on him. And then obviously he pulls the hood down to reveal he's Dustin Rhodes. He starts laying punches, probably hits a bionic elbow on Solo on the outside. And Seth goes to go and attack <laughs> Dustin. But then Cody grabs him, hits that crossroads, leaving Seth laying. And then Dustin gets into the ring. He picks up the WWE Championship that Seth's left laying on the floor. And he hands it to Cody. And Cody looks at it. He looks up at the WrestleMania sign. And he shakes his head and he goes, Not yet. Tosses it back on Seth. And then him and Dustin leave to close the show. 84, yeah, because that shit-ass main event. Whatever. <laughs> Liv and fucking Casey and Caden did better than that. I'm starting to think the Usos might be bad in this mod, by the way. Because I only got a 71 promo as well. But yes, a lot of announcements tonight. Changing the landscape, not only of No Way Out, but of WrestleMania 2. But the, the episode's not over, because we do have... I've, I remember, because it's been about three weeks since I recorded, so like... I had to go back and rewatch. Half the views on all of my videos are just of me watching them back because I forgot what I booked. <laughs> and that happened I had to rewatch what happened last time. We do have a championship special edition of Velocity next week. Dominic defends against RRE Sterling and then Death from Above challenge the Thatcher group for the trios belts. So we've got a filler episode of Velocity up next to I guess build to that. Ari Sterling kicks off the show and he's talking about your land lovers. You know, it be WrestleMania season and this year WrestleMania season be hidden extra hard for Ari Sterling. For it is Pirate Mania this year. Arr. And what better way to kick in the Pirate WrestleMania? Than with Ari Sterling as the cruiserweight champion of the world. And that's what I'm going to be next week. When that landlubber Dominic brings the treasure to me. And Ari Sterling picks up the win. Taking that title to the grand shores of WrestleMania. And then Anthony Nice comes out with Ari. Just Ari Davari. He says, no, 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 no. None of this, okay? This... This pirate here, this is what you think of Cruiserweight Wrestling. This isn't the face of Cruiserweight Wrestling. Mysterio. The face of Cruiserweight Wrestling, okay? The MVP of the Royal Rumble. That Mysterio, okay? Now, Dominic, he's not here tonight. He's got daddy problems, you know? He's got father time to deal with by some has-been trying to cling off his name. But he'll be here next week to whoop your ass, Ari. And that's if you make it, because you ain't even the best Ari in Cruiserweight Wrestling. That's this man, Ari Adive Ari. And he's going to teach you a lesson right now about who the real Ari is here in Cruiserweight Wrestling. So now Joe. Um, so Joe retired in the game. So I brought him back just to be a commentator on Velocity. Because Lita is on um, Heat, so yeah. Joe is on comms. He won't be wrestling because he's retired. And I tried to talk him out of it. And he said no. And I can't do it because he's only just retired. So that's just there. He's here. Don't expect to see him in the ring. But I couldn't let him be unemployed. So there we go. 60 for the match. Ari beats Ari, Ari Davari. Making him submit with a Davy Jones locker. Ar. As you can see how went through and did some finisher changes. I don't, think, I don't think I got all the way through. 
but like I had to give Joe Hendry the standing ovation. I had to give Andre Chase like some. I think it's just called the teachable moment. I called it, and then I gave Ari Davy Jones locker as a submission hold because that seems piratey. Sixty-two for Ari, forty-five for Aria. We then see Funaki, SmackDown's number one interviewer, and he's interviewing the Lady Killers. And they're there, and he goes, Ah, for once in my life, Funaki, I'm happy to see you. You know, normally I'd be asking, you know, where that Kayla mm, is. But I'm actually happy, because it's our favourite time of the year. The time of love. And all the lasses are going to be looking for love. That's where we come in. Anybody out there looking for a, a real man this Valentine's Day, hit us up. Takes his chewing gum out, pops it on top of the microphone, and then walks off ahead of his match with Evan Bourne. Which gets a 72. Um, Zachary ben gets a win, Champagne Super Knee Bar in 12.44. Um, 70 for Zachary, 64 for Evan Bourne. And yeah, he picks up a win because he lost the um, X marks the spot match. And I think he was in the Fatal 4 way last week and also lost that. So yeah, I just need to give him a win because uh, I do like the Lady Killers. They are a guilty pleasure of mine. Even though I literally cringe every time I have to do their own promos because their dialogue is just ugh, icky. But that's what makes them great. Then, 8 evaded main event. A preview of the trio's title match next week. Grand Metal League and Team of Fee Thatcher. And it is Metal League of Death From Above who picks up the win. He pins Thatcher in 15-28 with the Metal League driver. An 86 for Metal League and an 87 for Thatcher. And if that happens next week, well, by God, we'll have new Cruiserweight trio champions. I actually think that match is going to be the main event. I think Dominic and Ari are going to open, and then the trio start match will main event. But yeah, that's it for Velocity this week. Um, 75 rated show, whatever. That's just, <laughs> the main event of Velocity was better than the main event of SmackDown this week. But yeah, Spot Matters more than that is what you thought of the show. So do let me know what you thought in the comments below. This has gone over an hour again. <laughs> Man, you can tell it's WrestleMania season. Anyway, I'll see you next time for Week 2's episode of Raw. And... Following Candice LeRae's big announcement on SmackDown this week, I will have a big update on an upcoming episode of Monday Night Raw, which you're not going to want to miss. See you then.